we gather thought leaders who have stories to share through the medium of podcasting. But if your, your story is connected to your business, how much more valuable is that to like have relatability? Mm -hmm. If we can have relatability and we can promote and serve and sell and grow business, we're not competing, we're partnering. Like there's wins for everyone. Hi, I'm Erin Marcus, former corporate executive turned entrepreneur and founder and CEO of Conquer Your Business. Welcome to the Ready Yet podcast. We're excited to bring you more than 100 episodes of interviews and insights designed to help entrepreneurs get the financial and emotional freedom they need in order to build a business and a life they're proud of. Welcome to this episode of the Ready Yet podcast. So here's what happened. In the last several weeks, I've had four different people go, oh my God, you have to meet Kyle Sullivan. You have to meet, like all of a sudden I was surrounded by people who knew Kyle Sullivan. And then, um, which is nice, great endorsement, right? That's the whole goal of marketing is Thanks. Omnip yeah. <laughs> omnipresence, right? And here you are. So today's guest, Kyle Sullivan, will get into, I don't even know what we're going to get into at this point. But why don't, um, before we do that, tell people what it is, what you do, and why everybody seems to know you at this point. <laughs> well, thank you, Aaron, for the, the kind introduction. <laughs> There's days I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm just oh, like, please. that's like normal. You, you just need a network, and you need to tell people how awesome they are through story. Yeah. So on, a, on an understanding level, I'm a podcast performance coach, and I help entrepreneurs who have high-ticket services grow and build their platforms and grow their network so that they can cross-refer high-ticket uh, programs, help the world be a better place by offering amazing services to other individuals. So in the B2B space, never knew I'd be here. No. Uh, but wow, I, I have my own podcast called Scaling Mountains, where I talk about entrepreneurs who have a goal. They have a summit. They want to be somewhere, whether that's in their business, that's in their life, uh, that's in their personal pursuits, but the path they take looks completely different than what they thought because uh, that's my story. And, the, and so it's easy to resonate with other people who have similar stories. Yeah. Or the opposite stories, right? We were talking before that you were a rule follower, right? You had this path laid out and it wasn't that I didn't have a, and I didn't have a path. Who am I kidding? I didn't have a path. I don't follow rules. I was achieving success in corporate and would get the next promotion. And it was always one of those things where I got the next promotion and opportunity because I did a good job, right? You do a good job, the next door open. So even though I never had a path, I had a really, really deep work ethic, hmm. which created the path. And I love, <laughs> I love the irony between the fact that your podcast is called Scaling Mountains. And a couple of days ago, you kind of almost fell off one, which is the opposite of Scaling <laughs> Mountains. Yeah, well, it's, that was a perfect tee up. So um, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to bring everyone on a journey if that's okay. And, yes. and kind of share where this path started, where it goes and, and see what comes out of it. I spent 12 years of my life as an EMT. So my my life dream, my goal was to be a paramedic firefighter. And that was my brother's, by the way, also. Really? Mm -hmm. I would hear an ambulance and I would like rush out and I would say, Mom, Dad, what, what's going on? And you know, as a young kid, every every little boy, you know, that that was the dream, that was the story. But what you just said about work ethic work ethic, my parents really instilled that to me. Like you can do anything as long as you put your your heart and your effort towards it. So I did. And they, they offered so much time for me to grow and excel. So here I was, this like performance-driven uh, kid, 4.0 GPA, never failed at anything. Drove oh my God, hard. I like, if they would have had the electronic tracking of humans in the 70s and 80s that they do now, I didn't meet the attendance requirements to graduate. <laughs> yeah. It's a I little different like... path. And yet, and, right, and like, here we are in the same room together, right? I know we have like complete opposite theories of how we grew up, Yeah, but it was like, follow the rules and you'll be successful. And so I did. And it was 2010 and I was going to paramedic school. I was a top candidate in my fire academy. I had glowing accolades. And I had volunteered for our local fire service for about 
seven years at this point, really creating a name for myself so I can just go in and get the job I wanted. And I did not make it through paramedic school. I failed. And there was this overwhelming sense of fear that, okay, I lost, I, I failed. I lost this. What, what's going on? Not only that, but I had an ankle injury and that required surgery because when I got back home, I had the local fire chief offer me a position still, regardless of my not passing paramedic school. He said, I still want to hire you with the department because of the work ethic that you've put in. And so here I am, performance work ethic. And I had to get surgery on my ankle. That chief retired and a new chief came in requiring paramedics only. Well, and, and for my brother, he hurt his back. Mm. And he had already at 16 and 17 years old saved people's lives at a, as a lifeguard, like yeah. traffic accidents in front of the pool. And he would jump in and save people's lives. And yet, because he had hurt his back, no insurance coverage, mm. there's no insurance company was going to allow him on a fire department. They weren't going to allow him on a team because he's oh. now a risk. Yeah. So similar, like yeah. all of a sudden it's all gone. In a matter of six months, a career I, I spent, you know, 12 years to go after was, was gone. And it was this moment, like, what do I do? Who am I? I put so much identity in the path that I didn't even know who I was. And I moved back to my parents. I was 23 years old, living in my, in my old room growing up in a very dark, depressed state. And the, my brother was touring Europe and we had an open room and I was connected to uh, this program that takes people out into the back country, into the wilderness called Ultimate Wilderness Adventures. And there, I did an internship uh, over a summer of break, but there was this uh, girl who we knew from other contacts. She was going through the same internship. She didn't know where she was going to stay. And my parents met her and said, hey, we have an extra room. Uh, come stay at my house. Our, <laughs> our son just moved back. He's going through a hard time. He needs a friend. And buddy, <laughs> right. Move in. I'm like, we don't want to wow. get him a dog. Will you come help him? Yeah, this right. is this is a horrible situation. Look, I don't need, you know, anyways. So. <laughs> yes, I can only imagine. And so here comes Ashley. She moves in. And over the course of a number of months, we we become you know, best friends. She just, she loved me where I was at. You know, I, I think that's so important where we expect so much out of people, but how often do we truly just see where they're at and give individuals what they need? Well, and, and it's, conversely though, do we allow people to love us? Like a lot of time, there's a lot mm -hmm. of horrible people out there who will not love you where you're at, but I think there's just as many people who think they're unlovable where they're mm -hmm. at. Yeah which is the flip side of that same problem, but. Mm, that's a really good point. And so I, I started experiencing, there was no, there was no attachments. There was no, like, what can I get out of this relationship? And as my ankle healed, um, I was doing some school working for my dad. He had a carpet cleaning business. And so I was just kind of like trying to find myself again. What is this all about? And uh, it was winter really, really cold winter here in the Sierra Nevada mountains, but no snow. So typically when it's a really cold winter and no snow, you can get out into the back country and there's tons of lakes that we have in desolation wilderness. And so both of us being just this, these outdoor connoisseurs, we said, let's go see what we can see. And we had heard that this lake called Eagle Lake, it was only a mile in the back country was frozen and it doesn't freeze. Well, it freezes every year, but there's feet of snow. Well, this year there was no snow. So there was a rumor going through town through the locals that, hey, it is glass out there right oh, now. Yeah. And if you have ice skates, oh, like go for right. it. And so here we are, we, we hike back out. We brought headlamps because it gets dark at like four o'clock, you know, and we ice skated on this backcountry lake, probably the size of, two football fields long and two football fields wide. And it was like dreamy. It was incredible. I've never gone so fast, done so many cool things. Like all, you can go as far as you wanted in 
just do loops. And it was really clear um, ice. So you can like nice. see two feet down in little bubbles that had frozen all the way through like sticks and fish. And it was like, whoa, this is a different world. So it's starting to get late in the evening. And we said, okay, we should get going. And I do one more loop. And I'm actually going backwards, you know, trying to show off. And my skate catches. I caught my skate and my head went straight down to the ice, just crack oh. right on the ice. And I could still feel and remember the sound. I never passed out. I was conscious the whole time, but my head was split open, blood everywhere. And the pounding of my head, like I knew it, it's just that gut discernment that something is seriously wrong. And so um, she hiked me out with headlamps down this path. She had yeah. no idea how to drive a stick shift. My, I had a Tacoma truck. She figured it out on the way, just with that adrenaline. Filled your gears, right? Yeah. Second gear, <laughs> she, the, whole, second gear the whole way down. <laughs> I was, oh I was very impressed, but I had to stop along the time and vomit because I had such oh, a bad concussion. Room, yeah. We get to the emergency room. And at this time, uh, one of my, I had moved into the hospital as an emergency room technician. So I was always helping people in this state. Now I'm one right, of the your friend, your, your work friends that uh, you get carted yeah. in your work friends are taking care of you. And I'll never forget. I was on the gurney in the emergency room and they scanned my brain and they said, okay, you have a big mass in your brain and that's either a tumor or a bleed. And you're too young and you have no symptom, other symptoms of a tumor. You just had a head injury. We, we believe you have a really bad, massive bleed in your brain. And further investigation showed it was uh, an epidural bleed. So it was on the outside of my brain, pushing my brain down. Mm -hmm. And if you don't allow the pressure to expand, you, you lose your heartbeat, you lose your ability to breathe, and it's fatal. And so they put me in a helicopter and they're flying me the trauma renowned uh, center. And I was laying there. I never forget like the, the overwhelming fear that came in and just at this place of like, what is going on? And I, I was praying to God and, and holding on to my Christian faith that was so important. And I said, God, what's happening? And I, I literally almost like saw a vision of two hands and said, choose fear or choose my peace. And out loud, I said, I choose your peace. And I could tangibly feel Aaron, like this blanket, like a sheet being just like laid over me is the best way I can describe it. And I entered into this like crazy amount of peace to where all night in the trauma ICU, I had someone next to me because you, you share like right. two, a nurse a trauma, has two right. trauma. They were on life support from a, a car accident. And here I am like next to them, like, okay, this is serious. The alarms kept going off at night because my heart rate went into the forties. I was such at a level of peace in the morning. They scanned my brain again. They said, I don't know how to tell you this, but the bleeding in your brain has stopped and we don't have to do a craniotomy, open your skull or anything like that. The, the next option is, is getting some speech therapist and some memory therapist to do some tests. And if you clear, we're going to discharge you home. And hands down, uh, bonafide miracle. I, I was wheeled out of the trauma ICU. It was exactly to the minute, 24 hours after the event had started. And it was at that moment that I knew like, okay, my path and all the paths I'd taken maybe to this moment was kind of this realignment, this redefining thing of I'm here for a reason. I'm alive. And, and God has saved my life. And so uh, Ashley is now my wife. We have three kids. And she said, I just had to hit my head hard enough for me to commit to asking her <laughs> to marry, figure that out. Marry her. <laughs> right, exactly. She, well, right. I mean, in terms of the uh, give and take of marriage, you're screwed. You're going to never do enough. Like there's no way to pay that back. But um it's so interesting, you know, the audience is entrepreneurs, the audience is business owners, and maybe not everyone has as extreme a story. Hmm. 
but I think for people, they, I don't know, you got to go suit through something to learn how to be successful at this. Yeah. There's got to be a catalyst mm -hmm. that opens your mind, opens your heart, changes the way you think about things. Whether that happens to you as an adult, mine was more as a child, which is what I think put me on the weird path. Um, and learning how to not get so monumentally attached to things, right? Yeah. Knowing it all can change. Mm. And, and for to speak to the entrepreneurs out there, I had no idea what was the next step, what was the next path. I didn't even see myself in business or connecting or even in, in the podcast space. This, this was crazy. I mean, this was now two years ago. I was going to nursing school. I was like, okay, no more fire department. <laughs> Hospital is where, I mean, I'm, I'm alive. I have this passion for patients. I would get in trouble in the ER because I'd spend too much time with patients because I wanted to hear their story. And so I was like, okay, I need more time with patients. So I'm going to go to nursing school. But now with a family, like, how do you make this possible? I don't want a hundred grand in student loan debt just to live off for two years. And that doesn't even include the school. And so I was kind of going down that path of like, what's the side hustle so that I can make this career and this dream possible. And that little pivot of networking and asking questions, I just started asking questions like, what can you do out there? What's possible through Amazon? What's possible through high ticket sales? What's, what's possible through trading and stock market? You're like, when you're in these moments of like, I have to figure something out, you just start asking a lot but, of questions. But you also had the backdrop after the experience you had that's a different backdrop than mm -hmm. figuring things out out of scarcity or panic. I mm -hmm. think there's... when Right? When you have everything changed for you, you start to think that anything's possible, mm. right? You get this backdrop of anything being possible, yeah. which is creates this situation of curiosity instead of scarcity and mm. asking questions from that point of view. Yeah. Instead of what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. I think that that fear of failure I had to go through just personally. And then it was the fear of, the, of death, literally, right. like all this is gone. What really is important? Like how bad can it be? And in my story, this was just an accident. Like this was a, a traumatic accident. There are stories out there that I am shocked. And that's why I love this medium of podcasting. Cause there's times I'm like, tearing up on an episode when people are sharing to me their struggles and I was like okay I thought I had a good story <laughs> right oh totally right goodness. and and but okay so a little bit on that because I think you know and and hearing your story and to me it's the most obvious thing in the world that you're in an environment where you focus on true connections. For me, my experience podcasting, where I'm hosting so many people and being a guest on so many podcasts has been unbelievable who I've gotten to meet all over the world yeah. and the conversations we've had, like real conversations, um, because yeah. that's what this medium really provides mm -hmm. is real conversations. But this idea that what you just said to is one of my like core beliefs, you never know what anybody else went through. Mm. you never yeah. know when I was uh 25 years old 26 years old I was a manager of a big apartment complex in the Chicago suburbs mm. I still don't know what made somebody give 25 year old me their multi-million dollar asset and said here go be in charge of this right <laughs> but there I was and we had to uh, uh, a man and a woman who cleaned the apartments in the hallways for us and the owner of the business treated them like crap, mm. treated them like crap because they didn't speak English. And, but they were going to classes. So a couple months later, they did speak English. And then I find out that they were political refugees. Wow. 
right? They were political refugees. They had a daughter they left behind and they had to have a secret code with the grandmother who had custody of the daughter of when they could call because they knew all the phones were being bugged. Mm. Like you never know. Yeah. They were, one was a chemistry teacher and one was like a bioengineer. Mm-hmm. And they were only cleaning apartments because of a language barrier. Mm-hmm. You you never know. Yeah. And and can you mm-hmm. can you always, always, always come from a place of empathy and curiosity? I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Ready Yet podcast brought to you by Conquer Your Business. With decades of experience, Conquer Your Business creates business and branding strategies that build multiple six and seven figure businesses. And we don't just show you what to do. We have an entire team of people available to help you do it, strategy and implementation. You can learn more and reach out to us by visiting conqueryourbusiness.com. And and at times, I think that the biggest... where I'm looking for the attack on that would be that we assume um right. we we look at someone's linkedin profile we looked at we look at their bio we we see what they're doing and we go okay this is what this conversation is going to be or this is where maybe I can serve them or maybe not but until you're doing this it's like you have no oh, idea no no idea i um I talk about this all the time in in our coaching calls. Typically, we're we're after the best story or the the best prospect or the best lead of who we can serve. But I I started just saying, you know what? I'm willing to network with people even if they're not. And uh, I, I had an individual, and his story was mediocre. But I was like, how can we serve others? And I started asking for what I was what I was looking for. And I said, I'm, I'm in this space. I I serve B2B markets now and I I love stories. And we just started talking and he sent me an individual. You guys can look this up. Big shout out to Jen Drummond for her life. But uh, she came my way. She, she has scaled uh, many mountains. I I watched her YouTube and I was like, Oh my gosh, I I want this story to get out into the world. And (laughs) I cold outreached her on LinkedIn and I said, you were referred by someone else who was on my podcast. Uh, Jen was very successful in financial space. She moved over a billion dollars in assets. She was in an almost fatal car crash and she survived. She has seven kids oh, wow. and her, her son one day was having difficulty with his math homework. And she's like, come on, buddy. It's okay. We do hard things. And he goes, mom, if, if you do hard thing, if we do hard things, why don't you just go scale the tallest mountain? And at that time, she was looking at training and scaling this um, uh, big peak, I, I believe in Alaska somewhere. I could be wrong, but fast forward a year later, she had scaled it. And not only that, but she ended up scaling Everest. And just this year, she broke the Guinness Book of World Records for being the only female to scale all second seven summits of the world. And she said, I want to help mom entrepreneurs know that you can do incredible things and still run businesses and and be the entrepreneur that maybe you've wanted to, but still be a mom. And so she launched a mastermind. We're, We're working with her. She, and just cross referring at a high, high level and seeing the business come yes. out of first the story that you have, and you don't have to have a crazy story like that, but just networking with people that have amazing stories. I don't know. It's it's just my passion it, button now. Like you you press it, it. I'm like, ooh, let's get a good story out there. And this could lead to like you an incredible know, right? amount of business. <laughs> the way that I was taught and the, the phrase that he used, connect as a human first. Mm, yeah, That's it connect as a human first. And I have the same approach where, yeah, there's times in the business that we have a, you know, we're trying to get a cash injection. We're trying to launch something and we get real dialed in on our prospecting and our sales process. And that's great. You have to have that. Um, But much like you, I decided a long time ago, 
that I was going to walk into every room and meet every person knowing I can help in some way. Mm -hmm. Like that's just it. Help in some way. Givers always win. Givers always win. Well, in, for me, it came from a little weird place. Not that I don't enjoy giving. Like in my last business, I referred out $6 million of real estate in six years, (laughs) which was great. I was excited to do it. It wasn't what I did for a living. It was adjacent to what I did for a living. And it made moving into this business easier because if you get on stage in front of a bunch of realtors and said, I referred out $6 million in real estate, (laughs) they'll give you about a minute and a half instead of eight seconds to like, oh, maybe we should pay attention to this person. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about meeting people and being open like that, the problem that I was having was, you know, I'm five feet tall. I'm from the city of Chicago, like total street kid. We were barely, I won't even say we weren't juvenile delinquents because that's just not true. And I had this picture in my head that somebody who was tall, thin, blonde and put together in an outfit. Where this came from, like this is a stupid ass stories we tell ourselves. If they looked put together in a uh, some kind of outfit that where you can tell everything went together, I'm like, oh, look, they really have it figured out. Yeah. And then they would say, oh, we should have coffee. We can be accountability partners, whatever. And I'd be all, oh my God, they like me, I, you know? And yeah. And then I'd go and meet them. I'm like, they have no idea what the hell they're doing. I could have helped this person, <laughs> except I, not them. I put them on a pedestal. Yeah. Good point. For some, why? Because their purse matched their shoes. I mean, come on. Yeah. And so instead walking in, Knowing I can help in some way, being open to anything, Hmm. open to anything. I, you know, I teased you when I first met you, I had all these people tell me I had to meet you and the way they were talking about it, I'm thinking (laughs) this is going to be some big old pyramid scheme. Like what the hell? Right. Cause I didn't have the full picture, Mm -hmm. but I didn't say no, I don't want to meet Kyle because you people don't explain what he does for a living. (laughs) You know what? Out of that conversation, (laughs) side note. There's so many good uh, pieces and nuggets here to make sure your messaging and your branding is very, very clear and very, very simple. Very, I think a lot of times we, think, we well, try to elaborate this big story of how you should meet this person and why. Everybody shorten it up. Short. <laughs> if I get if I get an email with like three paragraphs of why I should meet someone, I'm like I have no attention span. I don't even I don't even read that. But if bullet points, if it's please. Two sentences. <laughs> Hey, connect with Erin. She has an awesome podcast. <laughs> You'd be a great guest. Let's do it. Right, like keep we'll it figure simple. this out as we go, but let's just connect like, and do don't, it. Don't make assumptions that close doors. Mm. You know, because here you and I are, I have people to send your way. I know, I know something will come out of it for me. Like the relationship is at the beginning, not the end. We have these opposite end of the spectrum stories because here you are like, adult near-death experience out in the woods. I grew up in the city. All my near-death experiences happened before I was five. In the streets. <laughs> Four of them. And that's not even counting the time we got shot at while we were accidentally came across a drug deal gone bad at 15 years old, illegally driving cars. But like, right? right? But you can hmm. connect, right? There's more similarities and more help And it's not just the stories, but the thing that I know about growing a business and there's books on this, right? It's who, not what every part of your, every part of your life, as soon as something goes wrong, you're like, oh my God, who do I know who can help me? Why don't we do that in our businesses Mm. instead of, oh my God, what do I need to do? Yeah. So getting some subject matter expertise for our people here, like, so no pressure on Aaron, but you judge people's performances on podcasts. I don't know. Do I get like a report card after this? Um, well, I, I'm on your side and this is, you're doing <laughs> fantastic. Uh, I don't guest a lot. So I was going to ask you the same question. Uh, but like, what are you, um, hmm. what do you see? What is out there to give people that subject matter expertise? Why is this environment? Hmm. Like I put this in the framework of it's creating relationships. This is my primary way to network with people. I meet cool people this way. Yeah. 
like why is podcasting I mean you came into it a little bit but like get more specific for folks why is this the thing they should be doing the word that comes to me is gathering and what we do specifically just in our company our industry but I say this is this is for anyone out there uh who who wants to not only build your business, but use a platform in order to connect with humans. Like business is done human by human. I don't care if you have a million clicks on social media, like that's awesome. Don't, don't get me wrong, but we focus on, on what everyone else is doing just because it's, it's the industry standard. But if your million clicks aren't equaling a million dollars, like how are, how are you leveraging trying to be authentic but actually doing the the work and connecting to people to help succeed not only them but you too like mm-hmm. we're we're in this to support each other and so the word that comes to me is gathering because we gather thought leaders who have stories to share through the medium of podcasting but if your your story is connected to your business how much more valuable is that to like have uh the word is I just said it earlier, relatability. Mm -hmm. If we can have relatability and we can promote and serve and sell and grow business, we're not competing, we're partnering. Like there's wins for everyone. And And also in marketing, so first of all, long form content hacks no like and trust. By the end of an hour long conversation, you know me, you like me, you don't like me, but you know, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Right. As opposed to flat two dimensional posts or more intentional marketing. Like none of us are good enough actors to keep this persona up for this long, which (laughs) is beneficial. Right. And I don't have the attention span to do it anyway, but, um, so I think that's one of the benefits. Mm. And the other piece is values-based purchasing. Hmm. I think more than ever, people want to partner with, buy from, get involved with people who are aligned with them for better or for worse, right? Not to be divisive about it. Cause again, you and I are so opposite, but our values align pretty well. Absolutely. Really good point. Right. And, and this platform is a way to do that. And when I started my podcast, one of the things that I, and it, it was all written out, it wasn't just a thought. My world changed when Mm. somebody else gave me a platform to speak from. Mm. My world changed when somebody else filled a room full of people and let me get on stage and talk to them. (laughs) And so one of the, right. So one of the things that I wanted to do with my podcast was give that platform to other people because not everybody should have a podcast. You know, not everybody needs to have a podcast. Not every business needs to have a huge platform. Mm -hmm. But there's very few people who wouldn't benefit from a minute of a bigger platform. Yes. And you said it, focus on the platform, whatever that is, you yeah. need to connect to humans. Mm-hmm. We, we, we are, um, <laughs> social media falls on deaf ears and not because it's not good, but we get so in, inundated yeah. that the human element needs to be connected first. Once we are growing and we have the message to share and we have systems in place and we're networking, we're doing good. Guess what? Now you have, you reinvest to the platforms to help grow. So you get that reach, but never focus on your reach as the answer. Just use the reach to connect. to. It's It's a tool, not the goal. Yes. Really good. Yeah. All right. Well, you keep saying connecting and you and I can talk for six more hours, but we probably have things to do. Um, how do people get a hold of you? How do they connect with you? How do they learn more about mm. how you manage to regularly try to kill yourself <laughs> this weekend included? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to say two things. Not on purpose. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm going to say two things because when you opened up, you said, you know, you were, you're surviving over the weekend. And that's kind of the, the final piece of this story. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. save it, save it for the end. There you connecting, go. connecting with me, uh, pantheon.fm, Frank Mary. So pantheon.fm is where we help entrepreneurs uh, grow their network. And and we use all sorts of mediums, but uh, and then Kyle at 
pantheon.fm is my personal email. Check it every day. The the climax of the, the, the complete circle of this, which is so interesting. I'm still like in awe trying to figure this out. And maybe I don't have to, but It'll it was just this, It'll this, this moment. Um, this last weekend, I, I went out into the, the back country and I was in this completely other canyon. I, I wanted to visit some lakes that I haven't seen before. My wife said, go for it. My kids were like, daddy, come back alive. You know, I'm like, I, I gotta be okay. They've well, heard the stories. They I, don't trust you. <laughs> I was following the contours of this map to try to drop into this back country lake. Took slightly wrong turn. I'm not the best with directions. My wife will attest to that. And I'm like cliff band out. So I have to take off the pack, drop it down this, this canyon, and then down climb in my Chaco sandals so all the way down the head. Really yeah. well. <laughs> exactly. Good job. Sometimes you just go with it. I, I had I had water, I had a knife, I had a lighter. Like we could what do could this. possibly go wrong. <laughs> and um compl- I got on a different trail, but I was like, where does this go? I was looking at the mountains, like, okay, I think it's this trail. And I, I spent way too long. But anyways, the the end of it is I got to this place where I can make camp. And I was like, this is a really good place where I just want to settle in. And I walked over to this viewpoint, Aaron. And as I walked over, I looked down and I'm like, that lake looks so familiar. And I, I pull off the map whew, and I look at the lake and it's, it's Eagle Lake. It's the lake I cracked my head on 10 years ago. And you haven't, it's not, wasn't even far, but you haven't been back. I've been back once, but it, it was almost this like checking back into life mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. And here I am looking at water. It's summertime. There's no ice or snow. And I'm like, wow, so much can happen and your past can change. Is this reflection moment? And so I just like to leave off your your listeners to where like, take time to reflect in life and take moments to step back and go, look where I was, look where I am. And that journey can have the ups and downs but man, when you put the whole story together and and web it and all the people that have helped you where you're at, give thanks to them. All the people that you're hoping to inspire, truly connect and say, how, how can I help you? Because the journey, we're all on this journey. And when we embed our stories, it it makes this package worth sharing and and worth building. So um that's that's kind of like and my, I'm my curious. Legacy. Yeah. And I'm curious what you come up with, because that's um, what that original incident did for you is it opened you up to paying attention in a different way. Mm. Right. Yeah. And so many people don't. Right. They let things fly right by them. So it'll be interesting. We'll reconnect. You'll tell me what you uh, what were you supposed to get from that? Right. What were you supposed to be there to see, be there to learn, be there to hear? It's gonna be okay. That's like the first, <laughs> that the you, first thing that came okay. to me. Like, it's all gonna, gonna be, be okay. okay. <laughs> so, okay. I know we were gonna sign off, but I think there's something big about that. Mm. There is a massive amount of strength and courage that comes with knowing you're gonna be okay. Mm. And that to me is the difference between the people I see who take risks and don't take risks, who grow their business and don't grow their business. If underneath it all, you do not believe that you're going to be okay, you won't do anything. Mm-hmm. But, good, right? Like, I have my own history with surgeries. Working since I was 13 years old, I think one of the reasons... I've taken the risks that I've taken is because I know at the end of the day, I have zero problems taking care of myself. I have zero doubt. I'll be fine because I'm always fine. Regardless Mm -hmm. of what happens, we can go six more shows, right? I know I'm going to be fine. You know now that you're going to be fine. Yeah. And it's Mm -hmm. a whole different come from. It's a whole different come from. Ooh, you're you're part of like 
the whole description of what I've been searching for. Thank you. I'll take that. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be okay. <laughs> you're going to be, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Here's the thing. Thank you. I reach out to Kyle, learn more about Pantheon. Everyone I've met who's involved in this um, has been absolutely amazing humans with that same giving spirit that you have. Thank you for mm. your story, your vulnerability, your energy, your information, your time, right? The most valuable thing you have. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're amazing. This has been just inspiring for myself. So keep doing what you're doing. You're excellent host, Aaron. <laughs> 